Hey everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Uh, just a quick note for all of you um, who have been with this channel for a while. Uh, I have changed the way I'm recording these videos now. I'm running a mic directly into my camera. I didn't think that you could do that um, because it's just a 3.5 millimeter head jack, but I tested it out a lot and I actually like the sound better. So let me know down in the comments if you like this sound better. I hope that uh, everything sounds good with this cardioid mic pointed directly at my mouth. Hopefully you can hear me better and my playing won't overbear the sound of my voice. So anyway, also one quick thing. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of your support for the Spring Cell. That was just absolutely amazing. Um, I was totally overwhelmed with how many of you have supported me, uh, not only in that cell, but over the years with pro practice and VIP masterclass videos and all of those other uh, projects that I've been undertaking. So thank you for that. Today, I wanted to talk about choreographing. Um, what I mean by choreographing is the movements that you make when you're at the piano. So Kevin Kenner, one of my uh, heroes, uh, he won the, well, he got top prize in the International Chopin Competition in 1990. Just the stupidest thing ever that they didn't award him first prize. They awarded him second with no first prize. So super unfortunate. Um, I'm not really sure why, because he is such a brilliant artist. Um, he was at the University of Utah where I teach a few uh, weeks ago, and he was giving a master class and he started talking about this choreography. So I wanted to kind of share a few of the things that he said, not necessarily with the examples that he gave, but it ties back into a lesson I learned from Sergei Babayan a while ago about how you can make lines sound longer by the movements you make at the piano. And actually, I just jotted down some notes um, from what uh, Kevin said. He said, I I'm just paraphrasing, but the gestures we make at the keyboard are important and reflect the music. Do not make separate inflections with your body when trying to convey one long line. And then he said something almost verbatim like this. He said, the torso represents the long line. The hands and fingers often have shorter or more abbreviated movements, but the emphasis on the long line shouldn't have multiple big movements. So what he's saying is you can have little movements like this, but a lot of times people get wrapped up. So let's take a Chopin Nocturne, for instance, Opus 48, number one. This is one of my favorites that I've performed a lot throughout my life. See how distracting all of that m movement is? Now let's get our Arthur Rubinstein on and, and, <laughs> and play like a statue so it really just <laughs> feels like one long line. Here we go. And you can already see, when I'm moving less, there's almost more of a reverence in the way it appears. And you might think, oh, well, this is all superficial, what you're describing today, Josh. But I promise you it's not. It's actually highly musical. What you do with your body directly influences how you're thinking about the music. If I'm thinking like overly romantic, it's gonna cut up my line. Whereas if I'm thinking, continuation and then come down continue that movement and I, I don't think another single human being <laughs> embodies this better than Sergei Babayan everybody on this channel who's watched any of my videos know that he's my ultimate uh, favorite and my hero and it's kind of funny people who haven't heard of Sergei Babayan or haven't heard his playing think oh how good could he be and then everyone who sees him live or watches any of his lessons are like yep he's the best he's amazing so um, uh, perhaps if you've just heard a recording you know how amazing he is but there is something truly magnificent about watching him play I would highly recommend everyone go watch the Mozart concerto number 25 and if I remember, I'll link that in the description below. Hopefully I'll remember. Okay, so anyway, let's take another example. And I want to show you a little trick Babayan showed me in a lesson. It was 
life-changing and it was so great because we only had 10 minutes left of the lesson at one of his academies. I attended his um, academy at Cleveland Institute of Music twice. I was lucky enough to be accepted twice and um, I watched the majority of those lessons. Like so each day it's two weeks long. Every day it's four hours of teaching and um, so over the course of two weeks it's like 50 hours of teaching. Uh, because I think he took like one day off or something like that. Anyway, it was the greatest musical learning experience condensed into two weeks you could ever ask for. And I had 10 minutes left of this lesson one time and he said, why don't you just play me a little something that you'd like some critiques on? And I was like, you know, you don't play something that's not really well prepared for Babayan. Like you don't say, oh, I've been learning this. You just don't do that for him. He's, he's too good. So I was like, okay, let me play you something uh, that I've had a lot of experience with. And um, I played him this Chopin Nocturne. And he immediately said, what I want you to do is play the line, and I think I've described this in other videos, so forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but play the line as if it has no rhythm. Okay, and then watch your movement. It's this one circle. A lot of people do separate movements when it's in a slower tempo. They get, or maybe they do one movement there, but they do separate movements here. Avoid that. If you can do one long line, and then long line, just as if you did that, same motion. You just elongate it and then one long line coming down. Or you could even crescendo. So. And so forth. So I hope that helps each of you and gives you a few things to think about. Now, if you're playing like, let's see. Obviously, you're going to have more bounciness, but notice I'm not going, you know, like jumping around, being crazy. And I'm not going to name any names, but there's plenty of pianists out there who kind of go nuts with body movement and it distracts. And I think you should always serve the composers rather than saying, Hey, look at me. Now, if you absolutely feel like a gesture, like if you watch me play Samuel Barber's Sonata, I think I always used to go. And I'd play way up like that. Now, I can get away with, I could get away with that, but like sometimes you just want to throw into that last chord. That's not trying to draw attention. That's literally just trying to get more sound out of the piano. So. If your movement serves the sound, do it. If it's distracting, stop doing that. And I see this, I'm not really saying any of this to judge famous concert pianists that have too much body movement. I'm doing this because most amateur pianists or beginners or intermediates or even early advanced kind of are a little awkward at the piano sometimes and they say, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. It's probably because you have too much extraneous motion. I hope the ideas from today help. If any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Thanks for joining me today. You'll see a subscribe button up here. You can view all my video lessons down here and different courses that I've put together, or you can keep watching more videos over here. Thank you so much. Have a great week.